blah, 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 the Mythwits. Yeah, that's right. I didn't have an intro this week. The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, an unprepared host, Peter Bryant. Joining me this week is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Pete! What's in the bag? Oh, yeah, I forgot. What's in the bag? Oh, I forgot. What's yes. in the bag? All right, all right. I know what we're doing first tonight. But <laughs> before that, <laughs> what's in the bag? Our guest this week is Scott Pond. Hey, Scott. Hello, hello, hello. Hey. So Scott is a multi-creative with focuses with, with focus as a writer, photographer, graphic designer, artist, and creative consultant. He's done graphic design work for many authors, such as New York Times best-selling author Scott Sigler, our buddy, Parsec Award winning, and I hate to admit this, one of our really good buddies, Paul Cooley. Award-winning screenwriter and author Matt Wallace. Now, Mike, we haven't had Matt Wallace on yet. We'll have no, to get him on here. A... What's that? We have a lot in common with everyone. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Not to mention Jake Bible, uh, which we've had on the show. Sue Bayman, had Doc it. Coleman, Scott Roach, good buddy of ours. Had and him. Many others. We had him. <laughs> and everyone's had Scott Roach. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he gets around. Uh, so anyway, yep, I forgot that. Okay. Anyway, so Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a long time. We've talked to you many times about coming on the show, and it just hasn't happened. Yeah, I think I think we're going on a year and a half since we yeah. first talked about it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I don't know. It, it just it it is what it is. So anyway, um, so we want to talk to Scott about a whole bunch of stuff, but we got one piece of 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 um, uh, requirement: yearly, annual, yearly requirement. We have to get out of the way first. Uh, Scott, we do a thing where on Mike's birthday, we just started on my birthday too, but on Mike's birthday, I always get him a gift that he has to open on the show. He has no idea what's in that bag. I usually okay. try to make it fun for the audience. Uh, every, once it was a gift that he really liked last year. It was a, it, what was it, Mike, last year? A, a what? Last year was a bag of dicks. A bag of dicks, yes. I got uh, me a bag of dicks. And, and Mike loves a bag of dicks. It, oh, we're it, gonna it, find it, out. We're gonna find <laughs> out because because we need we need the folks to 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 comment. And I'm gonna I'm gonna run a campaign on this. We're gonna do this 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 year. Uh, it's a bag. It's a bag of candy dicks. Now they're little dicks, but it's a bag of them. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get people to bet or like like uh, guess how many dicks Mike can fit in his mouth at one time, and then we'll do it live on air, and he'll have to fit. We'll have to see how many dicks we can get in that mouth of his. Mm -hmm. Well, I would so. I would guess full size, normal size would be three. Three. No, so. these are these are small. This is a very you know they're so that that's that's like a like three hundred then. I know three hundred. And then but see the beauty of this is is then Mike can brag whenever we go anywhere he can say hey but can you fit fifty dicks in your mouth or whatever it is <laughs> as long as I get a coin out of it. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so Mike, Mike, Mike. I, and he's he's hey he's. Speaking of like of things that are kind of long and hard and roundish on the end, uh, he's talking through two years ago's gift. That was actually a really good one. That was a, a serious Ooh. gift. Ooh. Yes, it was. It yes. was. A, it was. It was very surprising. Yeah, he was, was surprised. He's it, like, "Holy it, shit, this is like a real gift." It wasn't a gag gift, and yet this one could actually gag me. Yes. <laughs> God. All, right. So. all right, Mike. So go ahead. The show. The camera's right, on I'm, you. All right, I'm opening this up. I'm pulling, pulling it out of the bag, out of its sheath. Paper abound, and uh, there is it seems to be some sort of apparel. I will, all right, listen. All right, should I hold it up in front of the camera first so that yes. everyone else gets to see it? Uh -huh. All right, here we go. I don't, uh, I have no idea what this says. <laughs> I, I, just, I don't know. I feel like I could I look at it now. Yes, I gotta say, it. Mike, I also, yes. Do, Oh, I'm looking at the feed. I love Uranus. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yes, Mike, I know you do. I know you do. That's awesome. <laughs> I think, You're right. I think we have a theme. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love Pete's anus just at this particular time. Right. But uh, that's for him to disclose. That said, you were right when you said that uh, I would – it's something that I would love and something I would use, but it's still a gag gift. You, yes. You nailed it, buddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I was like, I was like, this is funny, but I know Mike will wear it. Yeah, I would wear sure. it. Totally. Yeah, wear it. I'd wear it. Hey, hey while while we're speaking about t-shirts and such, it's, uh, how apropos, um, I happen to be wearing something here. Nice. That 
you know, some fans of Pond, Pondy might might uh, might recognize. And I think Mike. That's right. Mike? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would put my I love Uranus shirt on right away, but I don't want to I don't want to take away from this. And, and then, of course, say, Scott. I got to say, Mike is wearing a retired. That's right. Very popular one. We've been we've been asked multiple times to bring that back out. That's We're right. Like, nope, you missed it. That's a badass shirt. It is. And then Scott, of course, is wearing his. Yep, the new GFL shirt. Brand Fantastic. New. Very pretty. Very and pretty. Get over I, Scott Sigler's store. I got mine from right from uh, Dragon Con as well. Oh, yeah. nice. It came straight from Dragon Con. So. Yep. Straight out of Dragon Con. That's right. Oh, Jenny said. Jenny said not to wear that shirt with her. <laughs> oh, there's gonna be. Oh, I, it'll be like I love her anus. That, that's oh. the one I'll get. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well. Uh, so so we, we've kind of spilled the beans a little bit on what Scott does. You've seen three of the things that he does, T-shirts and stuff. Uh, uh, but, but hey, Scott, tell us, what all do you create? What, what kind of creative stuff do you do? Yeah, so my primary focus most of the time is uh, book cover designs. So both doing the layout and the artwork for covers for the folks you mentioned and many more. Um, but also working on any graphic design. I just recently did a whole slew of logos for the escape artist groups. So Podcastle and uh, Escape Pod and all those, we rebranded their logos, I think probably four, four or five months ago. So right. pretty, much, pretty much any graphic design, whether it's vector design or artwork, I, I pretty much have my hand in it. And then right. I also do amateur photography to supplement the images that I can't find to also do for the artwork. So a lot of the stuff you'll see, like for Scott Sigler's uh, limited edition GFL books, uh, the the photography is mine, and then I modify the crap out of it to make it fit in his universe. Right. Okay. okay. So, like, well, hey, let me ask you then. So one of the books that, that I saw you did with uh, with him and Matt Wallace was the um, title fight. Yeah. And was that an actual – that's not a picture of somebody you know, is it? Oh, no. That that one started off as a stock photo of okay. some, some boxer guy, but he was just – he was just a boxer, just okay. bare skinned, nothing on him. And then we went in and did a whole bunch of Photoshopping to change the color of it and then add in all the tats. And there's actually a couple of Easter eggs in there, too, if you look for them. Okay. And okay. if you have any idea what you're looking for, you'll find them. OK, great. Great. Yeah, I know that the street apparently had like a zillion friggin uh, Easter eggs in it. Um, yep. It's actually behind me. Yep. Yeah, the, the the street was a tough one in that um, it's probably the longest time I've spent on a cover. I think I spent 140 hours working on that cover. Good Lord. And, and there's 165 Easter eggs detailing Jim Henson, Sesame Street, the Muppets, uh, Cooley's fans, Cooley's stories. Mm -hmm. If you dig deep. You can find them, but but it takes a long time to find all those Easter eggs, and it took a long time to come up with all the Easter eggs for that one too. Did Pond? Did, did uh, I'm sorry. Did did uh, did Cooley find them all? Has he found them all yet? Oh no, I don't think anyone's found them all. Do you okay. do you have a document outlining all of the Easter eggs? No, but I would have to go through it inch by inch, and basically recreate what the Easter eggs are. I I know them when I look at them. I know exactly what the Easter eggs are, but. But no, I, I never created a document just because I wanted to keep it fun for everybody to try to find ones that no one else has found before. Right. Oh, okay. My God, I, 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 I would buy it. I, I mean, I, I've looked through and I found a lot of them. I don't know if yeah. I could. I don't know if I could find all of them. Yeah, that that one that one was an interesting one to create too because the actual street itself, the, the alleyway, is a composite of three or four photographs I took up here in Manchester, New Hampshire. So like the, the, the actual road itself is one picture. Part of the building on the left side of the stairwell is another picture. The right side of the stairwell is another picture. The stairwell itself is another picture. And then obviously the background where you see Ernie holding his uh, pleasure device is, is another picture back there. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you know what? Uh, so, so um, uh, Spence had mentioned, she said that, uh, she said that, you know, it's a shame they did a cease and desist, but I don't know if they did. I think didn't Paul didn't he wasn't that preemptive? Yeah, Paul talked to a couple couple lawyer folks and they right, said it's right. borderline. Okay. Which which anytime you get get in a situation where where your creative work is borderline plagiarism, so right, to speak, right. 
it, you, you pretty much have to make a decision. You can either keep going forward and chance that someone's going to flag it and actually issue a, a cease and desist. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you're trying to build your brand and trying to build yourself as a pro professional author, it's one of those sacrifices you have to make and say, you know, I, I, I love the story. I love the, the universe, but I can't pursue it because of the chance that it will prevent me from actually creating anything else in the future. Yeah, she she uh, she's a big fan of it. She's like, she said how much she loves it, and I love the street too. I, I honestly, God damn, I wish she could write a hundred of those books. Oh I, yeah, I totally love it. And she said that uh, her and Val Val Ford are going to be doing street related cosplay yeah. at Balticon. <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah, it's funny. So maybe we all ought to try. We ought to have a night when we are all doing a street cut. Wait a minute. No, I don't know what I would no, qualify to do. I don't do. know if I could. Yeah, that's, that's a not, lot of work, man. Doing a cosplay is a lot of work. It's hard. I think I think everyone should dress up as Pondy and have Manamana taped to his ass and <laughs> go around like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be funny. That would be hilarious. But you know, there's a movie. There's a movie coming out. I think it's called The Great Muppet Detective or something or, or The Muppet Detective. And it's it's a uh, something about you know it's basically a lot like Cooley's book, but I think it's the the I think it's the Jim Henson people who are doing it. Um, oh well, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Laura just said we could be Bert and Ernie. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I I would pay to see that guy. Oh God, could you imagine? I would do it. Hey, hey Bert. <laughs> uh, no, you would be Bert. Yeah, I'd be. I gotta Ernie. be Bert. Okay. okay. Really. Oh, I gotta be the angry. I gotta be the angry Scott, one. Scott, who who it would be Burton? Who would be Ernie? I I, I gotta agree with you. Peter yeah, would okay. be Bert. You'd right. be Ernie. Yeah, thank all you. Right. All right. So I, I mean, I'm not proud of that fact. I just know that. Well, I know my need, place. All you need is a two-two. You'll be good to go, Mike. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I you know before you, anyone said anything, <clears throat> I was thinking maybe I would go as like a you know uh like a a bag of dough or something. Yeah. A bag of yeah. oh, I see. Dough. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, you could. Well, but Mike, you know birds better than anybody, right? You I uh, I'm a bird guy. Yeah, bird guy. but I'm not going as Big Bird. Right. Oh no, no. But anyway, so all right, so, so Scott, um, all right, so you do book. You've been doing book covers, and and you do um, you do T-shirts and stuff. But you don't you do some other stuff too. You were doing, I think you were. So you did some photography and stuff. Do you do any any kind of um, like you did poster work? I think I saw one of your posters, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I do. I do posters for myself. I've I've done posters for Cooley. Uh, I don't think they have. I've done posters for Sigler too, as well. Right. But they're okay. but they're under my my brand, so to speak. So I sell them sell okay. them myself. Um, but yeah, those 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 mainly are, are are passion projects for the most part. I did a a series of the signs of the apocalypse, where I basically created scenes of different kinds of signs or memos or, or documents that you would find if you survived some kind of apocalypse. So, uh, okay. so I've got, I've, I've got one that's, that's a um, caution children at play mm -hmm. sign. And in the background, you see a playground with a zombie child kind of blurry oh. in the background. Nice. Um, and one that's a restroom that says, I hate zombies on it and bloody streaks across it and things like that. Basically, basically anything you'd see that's, that's a modern type sign but that's been apocalypse uh, modified based on whatever apocalypse they lived through. Okay. Very cool. That's a cool like concept. That. So, um, so tell us like, so you mentioned Scott and we mentioned all the, all the other people, but like, so what's it, so what's it like working with uh, these these creative you know creative types these writers and stuff? Are they are they easy to work with? I mean, you don't have to name <laughs> names, but is is it easy to work with? Is it challenging? Um, and and do you have do you go through like multiple passes and stuff? I mean, like how does all right? So let's say let, let's just do Scott. We, you know, everybody knows who Scott is. Let's do Scott. Scott wants a book cover. So does he come to you uh, and say, Hey, what can you do with me? What can or what can you do with me? What can you do for me? Yeah, it, it varies quite a bit. Sometimes he comes at me with, with an idea already formed. Okay. So, so, so he already knows what he wants on the cover, or already knows what he wants for, for the particular design. Those are both easier and harder. They're easier because you got a good starting point. You, you're not fishing around for ideas. You're not creating multiple concepts to send over to him. But at the same token, they're harder because he's already got the image in his head, mm -hmm. and pretty much no one can adequately describe what the image is in their head 
they can right. just basically give you an idea. So, so you're trying to match something that really only they can see within the green band of what's acceptable to the image in their head. Has he ever shared his, any of his versions of the book with you beforehand to give you an idea for the cover or any inspiration or has he shared parts yeah, as far as as far as pre beta and pre alpha yeah. release, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I I always end up with at least a beta release, okay. for example, of the GFL series, uh, maybe an alpha release for something like Title Fight, um, and 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 the challenging piece there is it takes time to read those. Mm -hmm. So so to actually take the time away to spend eight, twelve, sixteen hours reading the story, is is, is typically not necessarily fitting in with the schedule of getting the getting the actual design done. Right, right. So so right. so normally what I do is I'll skim through it, I'll look for key passages, I'll look for key descriptions, mm -hmm. try try to get some ideas as far as okay, what flavor is he going for? Is he is he focusing on 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 the emotions of the of the characters? Is he focusing on the action? Is it a combination? Is there a, any brand name companies that he's calling out or products such as Spider Spider Snacks for example in the GFL? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, just to grab ideas, because typically all you need to do is provide a visual of some of those minor elements, mm -hmm. and it completely ties the image together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. You know, it's funny. You said key descriptions. Could that be a description of a key? Or, oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just paying attention there, you see. That's what, good. Mike? That's good. Yeah. No? See what you did there. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And for those of you who have never read the GFL, you have to read the, you have to read the whole series of the GFL to get this. So go out and get all those books and read them all, and, and then yeah, you'll absolutely. understand what, what that comment was about. A uh, little uh, ding, ding. Discuss. Anyway, so um, so have you um, – when you first started doing this, did you approach uh, – did you approach people, say, like Scott or Paul – and say, hey, I can do this for you, or did they see some of your artwork and ask you if you could do it? It's, it's, it's actually funny you mentioned that, because I was thinking about it earlier today, and I went through a very large hiatus of not doing any actual creative work. So, so in high school and in, in middle school, I was really into the arts. I did sculpture, photography, everything. But then coming out of high school, I decided to join the Navy, in the in more of the technical field and that was really my focus from gosh 1992 all the way through 2009 so so a very long hiatus where i would do a little bit of artwork but really nothing mm -hmm. and what got me back into it was i just started listening to podcasts and patio books started listening to scott and he was running a contest for book two of the gfl series the starter where he was doing a logo contest and I just so happened to have gone back to college and I was taking some graphic design course. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I can, I can do this. This is cake. It's just, it's just an extension of the manual pencil-based graphic design I used to do, but right. with computers. So he was looking for 18 teams. And I submitted, gosh, I think 12 different teams worth of logos. And when they announced the winners, I ended up winning four of the logos. Oh, okay. Myself, myself, and one other guy—I forget, I forget who it was—but we won four logos a piece, and then other people won two or one logo, and that was basically that basically kicked me off. It, it um, talking with a later, they had liked a lot of the logos, but they kind of wanted to spread around the wealth a little bit because right. you really you really don't want to say yeah, give give nine logos to one guy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but. But the good thing is, is, that, is that's really what kind of opened the door is cool. in that um, they ran into some issues with getting the cover done for the starter because their cover designer bowed out at the last minute. So they asked me, hey, can you can you jump in and, and fix the problems that we have because we still need to meet the deadline in two weeks? And and at the time, I'm like, oh, crap, what the hell do I do? I haven't really done a lot of the computer graphic design. But it was one of those things where I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take a chance and say, yeah, I can do it. And I jumped in and figured out Photoshop and Illustrator kind of on the fly. Um, was able to fix the cover good enough to get it published. And we, we, we met the deadline. And that's basically what started the whole reintegration in the creative design again baptism by fire there is yeah. no substitute <laughs> exactly man. it's also the it's also the, the mentality i love the fake yep. it till you make it can you do this yes uh, ah yeah. yes i can yes. Oh, sure <laughs> all right so i don't know who stacy cotter is but uh they're saying that your high school art is killer so 
Do you have anything you could share with us? Oh, I don't have anything online right now because I lost in the last great virus. Oh. Um, but basically, my high school art was pencil drawings. I, I did a lot of uh, portraiture. Uh, Janine Carbonaro actually bought one of the reproductions of the vampire guy that I did. Huh. Um, I'd have to dig some up. I can I can send it to you later on because I don't actually have anything I'll wait. online. Right Go ahead, now. we'll wait. Wait a, minute. wait a minute. You said Janine Carbonaro. God damn it! I keep hearing her name. She's in Sigler books. She's in Cooley books. Who is this yep. Janine Carbonaro? Just just one of our fellows fellow Uber fans. I mean, she, okay, Scott, right. well, Scott and Cooley as well. Yeah, right. Okay, because because I'm with a name like that, she better make some mean pasta. Oh, she she can. Oh, well, there you Pure go. Pure Italian, I think. Okay, Janine, 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 if I got that wrong, <laughs> you can slap me later. Oh my God, this is there. This is unprecedented. There are so many people in the chat room right now. Starla Hutchton just joined. Hey, wow. Sal. She- she, Welcome, she hasn't Starla. watched us in a while. She's been on our show. She's one of our guests. Yeah. Welcome back. Hey. I love Starla. <laughs> and Starla, you have to come back on sometime. If you're, you know, if you're still watching this, you have to come back on. Hit me up. Tor- we'll, and we'll Tori says, on. go get the coaster. I don't know if you know where the coaster is, but. Uh, if you can take one second, I can find yeah, it. Yeah, go ahead. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's worth it. We want to see this. This is Give our work. One second. We'll okay, just, yeah, sure, uh, we'll, sure. we'll, we'll, we'll fangirl for, you know, <laughs> <putting in chat. laughs> So, hey, Starla, and uh, who else? Um, all kinds of fun people in there. A lot of people Spent- don't recognize. So, Laura Nicole, yeah. yeah. Well, so, Mike, I mean, how many how many GFL shirts do you have? Is is it just the the pirate shirt? Because I think I only I, have the the Kraken shirt. I have, the, I have the pirates and the Krakens. Oh, you do have the Krakens as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm oh, I'm close, man. I really want to get a uh, a jersey. I oh, really a Kraken jersey. Yeah. Well, shit. If you get one, I'll have to get one. But see, either a Kraken's jersey or what is it? The um, the, is it orbiting death? Hey, Scott, what are the the jerseys? Uh, which one is the pink? The with the pink bunnies? Uh the McMurdo murderers. Yeah, the McMurdo murderers. I was like, oh, maybe, but that is like that's like a, a far back reach back for something that's already reach back. You know what I mean? It's one thing. Like I can see, uh, a uh, what do you call it? Jersey, um, a Kraken's jersey from a mile away now. You know what All I mean? Right. I'm so used to seeing them. Like if I saw a McMurdo murderous jersey, I, I I don't think I've ever seen one in the wild. But that so but I'm thinking, God, I still would like to have one. Oh yeah, and and that's and that's 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 the attraction of the whole thing, right? Yeah. Is that is that you're going to be one of a few? Yeah. That actually know what it is. You're you're kind of in the in crowd, in that in that group. So it's it's a badge of honor yeah. to have one. But because I go, oh, I, maybe I want to pay seventy eighty dollars for a badge that at least some people would know, though. You know. Yep. Well, Dude, and, man, you, you go to Balticon or Dragon Con, and you're going to yeah. run into a bunch of people who are going to know. Yeah, people will know. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. All right, so let me show this. The, the The aspect ratio is off a little bit, so I'll try to turn it well enough. But that's okay. that's one of the pencil drawings. That's that you back did in that in high school. That's I did high that school. In, no, holy that was, shit! That was right after high school. I think that was '94 time frame. So a couple years wow. after high school. Very cool. Were you that playing vampire at the time? Me. No, it was just one of those things. I, okay. I wanted to say, okay, what would it be like if a vampire is actually wearing a crucifix earring? Okay. And just and just, and just kind of the, the um, dichotomy of the supernatural and the religious. Dude, yeah, your art is fun. really good. Thanks, brother. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I, I've Thank done you, some... Tori. Thank you for, like, you know, showing the man where to go to get the art. I asked, <laughs> any art? No. <laughs> well, I, we I want to go, go get the coat. I wouldn't know how to tie my shoes without Tori. So I know yeah. she's awesome. She was supposed to join us tonight, but she's traveling, right? She couldn't make it. Yeah, she she's down visiting her mom right now, uh, taking okay. care of some business that we need to get done. Right. Um, right. Unfortunately, her Wi-Fi is not the not the most yeah. stable down there, so she wasn't able to join us tonight. All right. Well, when you come back on sometime soon, uh, we'll have to have you both. You both have to we'll have to make sure that we can get both of you on, and we'll we'll uh, maybe we'll do a follow up, or we'll or we'll just. We'll just BS about something nerd related. Nothing. It won't be like an important, you know, uh, uh, show talking about anything in particular. We'll just pick a topic right. and talk and run with it. Yeah, it sounds perfect. Ed Starla, you were definitely going to have you on the show again, too. She just mentioned she would love to come on. So, all right, very good. All right, cool. So, hey, let's, um, let's, oh, oh, all right. So, one more, okay, two more things, two more things. And then we got to get, we'll get on to the second topic. Um, so, what was your biggest? What is your biggest challenge? Would would it be the trial by fire, or or have you had bigger challenges since then? No, I would say in general it's the trial by fire because 
because I was out of the actual creative game for so long and basically just completely skinned my knees to relearn it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a continuous process of discovering new techniques. And, and, and honestly, it's, it's, it's cool that Starla's on because I've learned a lot just kind of analyzing her, her cover art, cause, which is phenomenal. And, and just to add it to my own repertoire. And I know, I know she does the same thing with other, other designers. It's really just, just digging in and figuring out, okay, this is what I want to look like. Now, how the hell do I actually get it to look like that? Because it's, right. it's typically never a straightforward process with Photoshop or Illustrator, either of them. Oh yeah. So the new logo that we have, the new Mythwits logo, which, which I don't know if people, you know, people like pay attention to these things, but we changed our logo completely from last year. And, uh, the, the logo I came up with, because uh, I do all I do all my own graphic design, yep. the logo I came up with was uh, was kind of sort of by accident. I was just playing around with stuff. I'm uh, I'm like a twenty some year CAD drafter, so I you know I do mechanical engineering and, and stuff. Um, and I used to do drawings all the time. So I, when I was using I use AutoCAD instead of like Illustrator because just got more comfortable <laughs> in it. I think that is the funniest thing in the world. Like. <laughs> Well, the, the fact that to tell someone, like, if anyone is in the illustrate, you know, like uh, in the illustrate using Illustrator or using um, uh, Photoshop, that to say, yeah, Pete used to use um, AutoCAD first before he yeah. started using anything. Else. Well, hold that, on, now, now to be it, fair, it actually, it actually blows me away because I haven't used AutoCAD or or even CAD in. <laughs> 28 years. Well, see, I work in engineering, <laughs> so it's, I I've I have so long as I've been working. Almost. I mean, except for a couple of uh, other jobs that I had, but pretty much in the engineering world, I've always had CAD on my computer and I'm, I'm fantastic. It's it's my best skill. If I had to name one thing that I'm the best at, the best thing I'm at is is being a CAD operator. Um, But you got to remember that that CAD was one of the very first vector programs, period, to exist. So so if you say, I can't believe you do vector work in CAD, it's like, are you kidding me? They invented vector work. You know, it's, it's one of the, I, I, I want to say it's a contender for the very first vector program. If, if it's not, it's, it's one of the very, very first. Yeah. Yeah. It's you know, I, 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 I laugh, but I started out with CAD too back in high school right. in the architecture class and drafting class. Um, what's even funnier before I rediscovered illustrator in my day job <laughs> of all things, I would use Visio professional and use the cut and dice and slice and, and the manual drawing tools to create all my vectors. Right, so, right. so I used, I used basically a Microsoft office program to do most of my vector work for the day job. Right. Mm. Jeez. Yeah. It's, it's just funny, the stuff that we use. Cause like, I know now I should be using illustrator if I'm going to be oh. doing work, but I'm nowhere near as comfortable in illustrator. I can't move nearly as fast or as comfortable in that <laughs> program, but it's funny. Cause what I'll do is this, you're going to I'll do it in CAD first and then I'll copy the vectors. I'll basically do a copy paste of the vectors into Illustrator and finish it up. If only people knew what that meant. What? Oh, sorry. Anyway. No, I'm saying, but because it's like, because like Star was saying that you're a sadist. Yeah, exactly. I am. Exactly. Yeah, I am. Hey, hey, you do what you know and you do it how you know it, right? You, you, you know, Peter, so, so long as it takes you less than 40 hours to create a basic vector, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I, and talking about the you know the trial by fire. So so TSR did their their top secret uh, relaunch. So that they redid the game top secret. Love uh, that game. It, it, well, and Jason Jason came to me because I'm part of TSR. He came to me and he says, he said uh, we need to get a video together. And I'm just like, yeah, you need to get a video together. And he's just like, oh, uh, he's like, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I, we got to find somebody to do the video. I was like, oh fuck. I was like, <laughs> and it was dude. It was like a week away from the Kickstarter, like a week. And he hadn't even, he didn't have an idea for a video or anything. So I was like, all right, fine, Jason, I can do it. And he's like, you can do video. I was like, oh God, help me. Yes, I can do video. And <laughs> we slammed that video together. I mean, I, I, I finished it like the night before, like midnight, I was uploading it, right? I'd finished rendering it and I was uploading it and I got so many compliments. And I'd be like, oh my God, you did that video. I was like, Yes. I was like, I don't even know how I got it done. I have no idea because I was not given nearly enough time to do it. But it worked. It's great. It was a good time. Well, oh, that's that. That's that's pretty much the criteria for any project. You're never given enough time. Right. Yeah. Right. That's ever, tr- ever, ever. That's true. That's why. That's, that's why you have to take, take the Scotty approach and quadruple the time estimate. That way, you're you're pretty much insured to have at least somewhat of basic time. Truth. Mm-hmm. So what? So Scott, what is your favorite piece? What's a what's the what's the 
in your opinion, if you had to critique yourself, what is the best piece you've done or the one that you like the most? Or well, I guess, I guess it could be both, right? They could be the same. Yeah, I mean, I, I would actually go with two pieces, and and Cooley's going to love this because they're both his pieces. Um, <laughs> yeah, where the hell is Cooley anyway? <laughs> yeah, he's hiding again. You know, Cooley. <laughs> Bastard. Um, the street is is probably the oh. most satisfying in that. Basically, I was given carte blanche on that one. He said, "Do what you do, figure it out. All we need to do is is show Oscar." I'm like, ah, that's easy, and right. and it grew from a close up of Oscar's can to the monstrosity that you see on the book cover of actually oh, being the full alleyway. So good. But it, I mean, originally the plan was just do Oscar's can, do a little bit of graffiti and a little bit of trash around it. And that was it. And I'm like, right. you know what? We can do something better. And let, let me just run with it, Paul. And he's like, yeah, go for it. You got, you got my full trust. And 100, 120, 140 hours later, <laughs> <laughs> I finally came up for air and said, hey, what about this? And he, he was like, holy crap. Um, right. And then he started looking at it and he's that, that's when the Easter eggs started to come out to him. So it was definitely the most satisfying in that it actually came out better than I hoped. Right. right. Um, my second favorite has to be the demons of Garaga cover with, mm. with the um, uh, middle, middle Eastern woman who was actually a, a Caucasian dark haired woman. Originally I swapped her head, swapped her face. And then the, the demon hand I think is probably what, makes that probably my favorite one to design because I actually hand drew the demon hand and then modified it and tweaked it in Photoshop to make it look real. Is that one on rotation? No, that that one, that one is not on. We have, we have images on rotation while we talk. I I collected like 10 or 11 of your images and, and, um, and, and put them in the the slideshow so that people can see, you know, the stuff that you do while we talk. And I would say probably the only other one would be the, um, I think it's the MVP cover for Sigler for the GFL where it shows the, the GFL trophy and then the alien hands, the alien tentacle from the, from the score. Mm-hmm. because that one was one where we actually, where I actually created the props myself, then photographed them and then modified them and Photoshopped them to get them to look the way they look. So that, 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 that one was just a huge challenge in actually creating the physical elements just to be able to photo- to photograph them. Right. Right. And that's amazing. Like the, the steps you'll go through, you take like a real picture and there's all this work you got to put on it. And you're like, but that was a real, that was a real, why'd you have to do all that? Work? I, Cause it's a look I'm going for, I'm going for the, you know, you got to get the whole thing to work together. Yeah. And that's probably my, my, my downfall is that it has to be close to the perfect image in my head for me to go ahead and say, yeah, okay. I accept it. Even though I may not like a lot of elements of it. I know that other people don't see the flaws in it. So I just kind of accept, yeah, okay. They just don't see my, my issues, but it's good enough for what we're trying to do and probably exceed some of the stuff that we, we could have done otherwise. Right. And I want to, you know, I want to point out one thing real quick, you know, while we're talking about, and I'm know, sharing do, this, put me on the screen. Oh, here you go. Okay. Doing uh logos and stuff. Uh, if, if you, or out there and you're doing any kind of logo work or you want, oh, look at that hand. That's pretty badass. And you want to do any kind of logo work, right? It has to be vector. Please yes. don't do raster logos. Oh. It's, it's, I've done them in the past. It's just, they suck. Uh, it, it never, it, you may not notice it right away, but then when you start getting, starting to print it or you want to put it on a t-shirt or a mug or anything like that, you're going to find, oh crap, it's not good enough. Yeah. And I would actually go one step further on that, Peter. I would say, you want to start off with the vector logo, but then if you want to convert it into a rasterized art image that looks similar for other medium, that's the best way to go. I mean, the, right. the good, the good example of that is the escape artist. Um, if you look at the pseudopod logo, we've got both a, a rasterized logo of the escape pod and also a, a, ra- a, a, a vector image of the, escape pod as well so they, they've got they've got pretty much any use they want to use it for they can use it for whether right. it's t-shirts whether it's stationary whether it's artwork on the website they, they pretty much have anything covered right so so use cad first is what you're saying no no, uh, no. cad cad or visio <laughs> right. right. and, hey. and for those and for those wanting a real challenge use word 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, right. nice. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're let's go on now. Now, I mean, if you're if you are a CAD operator, you could use CAD. There's nothing to stop you from using CAD. Nothing wrong um, with it. Nothing, nothing stops wrong, you. Nothing stops me. That's right. But it's whatever you're comfortable in. Because no, what is true. it? Yep. The the best thing that you can the the best tool that you can use is the one that you will use and that you know how to use. To yeah. each his own. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so long so long as you can get the proper output, that's all that matters. That's Even right. if it takes you three times as long. <laughs> Starlet's like, oh lordy with the cat. <laughs> that's funny. All right, enough about the cat. Um so so Scott, uh you're also you're going through a challenging phase in your life. You got you got uh you got uh something you're fighting there. Yeah, so so one of those unexpected things kind of that crops into all of our lives and and um that we don't ever expect and we, we fear, but, but yeah, back in January, I was uh, diagnosed with colon cancer. Um, so it was, it was a shock to say the least. Um, but I think it's important to talk about it because a lot of people are, are scared of the subject. There's a lot of, there's a plethora of information out there on the web, but unfortunately, just like when, when you look up your symptoms on WebMD, um, it looks like worst case scenario every place you look. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I got kind a of scratch. A, kind of a, oh, it's cancer. No, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so it was kind of a, it, it wasn't, I guess, completely unexpected. Um, just because of the symptoms I had leading up to it. Um, cause basically, and, 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 and I'll talk Frank here because, cause it's just us kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, just us. Just us men. No one else is, just us men. no one else is looking. So, so I, I, I'd, I'd had symptoms leading up to it for probably six or seven months before we actually finally got some traction in diagnosing it. So one of the symptoms I had was, was basically a diarrhea and loose stool continuously for, for months and months. And when I went to my primary care physician for my annual checkup, he's like, ah, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's probably a diet related. Just go ahead and change your diet. Try, try, try some different things. It'll probably clear up. So I'm like, all right, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that. I'll change my diet. And I, I did that and, and really no, 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 no change at all. So then we get close to Thanksgiving time frame, and I start getting blood in the stool. Uh Oh, okay. And, and I'm like, Oh shit, this is, this is something significant. It's not, it's not me wiping too hard or something stupid like that. Right. It's, it's actual, that's actual blood in the stool. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to monitor it for a week and see what's going on. And it basically started to, increase in intensity and increase in the amount. And I'm like, ah, this, this is screwed up. I, I need to get this checked out. So I actually made an emergency room visit in early December. And, and he's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's probably diet related. So again, I get this, get, I get the song and dance, but, but we're, we're going to set you up with a gastrointestinal specialist to see if we can figure out what's going on and, yeah. and, and we'll call you. And that's, that's probably the worst, worst phrase in any industry is we'll call you. And so I waited and I waited. So Christmas comes. So mind you, it's almost a month later, still oh no God. call, mm. still no call. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is crap. And, and, and Tori was like, yeah, you, you need to call. You need to figure this out. So I called them back and say, Hey, you know, you, you guys are supposed to set me up with a gastrointestinal specialist and I've never received a call. I'm like, Oh, well that happens sometimes. They, they assume that you're going to call them. <laughs> I'm like, okay, give me the number and yeah, I'll right. call them. I mean, I, I, I can't keep doing this. So in early January, finally got a hold of the gastrointestinal specialist. So go in, talk to them. And she's like, well, based on your symptoms, it looks like it could be either Crohn's or it could be um, ulcerative colitis, which is basically the, the little brother of Crohn's, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get you set up for colonoscopy because, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 44, 45 years old. Mm-hmm. haven't had a colonoscopy yet because you're not scheduled for them yet. Right. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm sure I'll go in and do it. I'm not scared. Um, went in and got the colonoscopy. And then the results come in for colonoscopy. When we're sitting there, the doc comes in and says, well, it's not ulcerative colitis. It looks like you've got a cancerous growth in your colon, right close to the, to the um, rectum. Right. So, right. so at that point, this was a, a Thursday or a Friday. So you can't set up any follow-on tests. You can't set up anything. Oh, you think it's so, all weekend? With yeah. No, oh my yeah. god. Oh, oh, oh! It sucked. Tor- oh. Tori and I basically our jaws hit the floor. We're like, holy shit! What does this mean? 
Yeah, and have to wait and wait and wait. I remember yeah. reading your original post. It was like just incredible. It it it, it, it floors you, right? Because my my dad yeah. my dad died from lung cancer. Um, right. had had small cell carcinoma, which spread like wildfire. And he was from the time of diagnosis to the time of death, it was like six or seven months. Mm. So um, that's what's running through my head: is my father fighting cancer, my grandfather who had the same thing as my dad, and I'm sitting here going, "Okay, they say I have cancer. I I don't know is, what." What stage is it? Has it spread? Right. And we're sitting there with worst case scenarios just running through our heads until early the next week. Um, and the challenging piece there was to mm. is is I also have my daughter for the weekend. So so we're sitting there with the news of not having any real news to be able to figure out what's going on and, and trying to be be dad yeah. to my daughter over the weekend and, and not show any of my fear and my frustration right. and all that. Cause you don't want to scare her. Yeah. With, without, without any, any information. Right. Um, you really don't want to talk about it yet because you don't want to scare them unnecessarily because, because just, just saying you have cancer or have possibly cancer, you've, you've got this spectrum right. of possibilities right. from mm -hmm. worst case to best case. Right. Um, so, so it was, it was nerve wracking. And then, then the test started getting scheduled. So, uh, had to get a, um, an MRI, to see, okay, how big is it? Where is it located at? Um, had to get a couple of the tests to basically narrow down. Is it just that location? Has it spread and all that? Um, luckily, a week later, when we finally got through all the testing, uh, they determined that, yeah, it's it's localized to the colon. It is a big motherfucker. It's, mm. bas it's basically almost four inches long, almost three and a half inches wide. Ooh. on one dimension and two and a half inches wide on the other dimension. So it's, it's, it's a hefty one. Jeez. Uh, okay. The issue is because it's so big and where it's located at, you can't just go in and do surgery because it's, it's next to the bladder. It's next mm. to the prostate. It's next to the anus. It's, it's, it's basically next to most of the major organs down in that region. And is that just where it's feeding? It's just feeding off of a lot of that, that area's blood. Supply. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. So, so, so it's right there in that in that sweet spot, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and with the size, that's what I call it. Now. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I call it my sweet spot. <laughs> Boys. Um, <laughs> All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. Right. <laughs> but, but basically, surgery is not the first option in that because right. Right. you need to have clean margins, which means you have to have enough clean tissue around it mm -hmm. to go beyond the tumor. Yeah. Right. to make sure you remove it fully. So so the plan is, okay, we need to go through treatments to try to reduce the size of the tumor so that you get increased margins so you get a chance of not losing all that other stuff. Right. Um, so, yeah, that basically basically the, the treatment regime was basically 10 to 12 chemotherapy sessions. Um, and, and the chemo sessions are basically you got – two and a half days of chemo every two weeks and then it repeats mm -hmm. and it's it's a it's a nasty cocktail with lots of potential side effects luckily i only dealt with a couple of the side effects up to this point and then after the full spread of chemo the plan is to go plan, plan was to go in and do more testing to say okay was the chemo effective did it reduce the size of it and if it did great we move on to radiation if it didn't great we move on to radiation and then basically end up with five days a week for five to six weeks of radiation therapy where they basically put a bunch of emission devices around your body and focus radiation into a specific spot right. to basically fry the ever living shit out of the tumor. Mm -hmm. And then in parallel to that, you do chemo and then basically you have a rest period because they can't go in and do surgery right after radiation. You have to give your body a little bit of time to heal. Right. You haven't done any radiation yet. Have not done any radiation no. okay. yet. So, so this this was this was the whole spread spread of treatments, and then you basically give it a rest period, but not too much of a rest period because if you wait too long, then everything looks the same because it's all burnt. Mm. And so, so basically, the sweet spot is five to ten weeks after radiation, they go in and do the surgery if they need to, and and basically the surgery is one of three things. It's either they go in and they remove a piece of the colon that had the, mm -hmm. the cancerous growth, and that's it. 
everything's good after that. You get sewed back up and, and basically a few, several weeks later, you're back to pushing out dirt out of your backside like normal. Mm-hmm. Um, the second one is that because it's close to the rectum that they have to take the rectum and you end up with an ostomy bag for, for, for the feces. Right. So you yeah. end up with, with one of the bags on the side of your yeah. belly. And then the third option is that because it, it, if it's not reduced enough, they end up taking the bladder too, and you end up with the second ostomy bag for the oh, liquid waste. No. Okay. okay. We don't but, want that. But, I mean, you, you don't want that, but looking at the spectrum, right? You have to mm-hmm. look at the spectrum. Worst case is I'm dead in a couple months. Right. So, yeah. you know what? I'll deal with the bags. Yeah. Sure. Have to, yeah. Because yeah. I'll be alive and I can live, live normally. I've, I've had several people that have ostomy bags that, frankly, we wouldn't have guessed have ostomy bags. Sure, and they live normal, healthy lives. Yeah. So, so of the three scenarios, you know what? I'm good with any of the three because sure. it means that I'm alive and I can be there for my daughter and I can, sure. I can have a full life and, 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 and do everything. So, so that, that was basically the whole, the whole plan for, for how you treat this particular cancer. Right. Um, right. So unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, had a little bit of a twist today. Mm. Um, so the last week I've been dealing with a lot of pain in the backside to the point where I can't sit down, um, dealing with some recurrence of the symptoms. Right. So I went in today and explained, Hey, this is what I'm dealing with. It's, it's, it's painful. I can't, I can't deal with this. So, so basically they sent me back over to get an MRI again and basically to say, okay, is, is something abnormal going on? And, and also is the chemo actually doing what it's supposed to be doing? So basically went in for chemo today that got derailed to go over to the MRI and then got back from the MRI to basically hook back up and finish up chemo. And about an hour into the chemo, they got the results of the MRI. And, and, and unfortunately I haven't told anyone else this. I haven't posted this yet guys. So I'm sorry if you're hearing this for the first time on, on this wonderful podcast, but basically the the chemo hasn't done much of anything, Uh, which, which, which is okay because Mm -hmm. chemo doesn't always, impact the cancer in any way shape and form there, mm-hmm. there, there there is that chance now which which round are you on right now so i finished up round five a couple weeks ago this okay. week was supposed to be round six so so i i got i got a partial chemo mm-hmm. today um but basically they said okay it's good that we found out now mm-hmm. because under normal circumstances you wait until the end of the full chemo cycle then you do the testing to see if, what kind of effect they have so basically, we're halfway through the chemo cycle. We found out, yeah, the chemo is not really doing what it should be doing, but that's okay because now we can redivert to radiation instead. And radiation is is one of those things that's gonna it's gonna blast that motherfucker into oblivion right. and and shrink it, which is really really our goal. So right. let me ask you this: based on the uh, MRI, has there been growth, or is it has it at least not grown? And you know, it, if it didn't shrink, it didn't grow. No, it, it really didn't grow. It, it, okay. it changed the length, width, and height dimensions a little bit, but the overall volume is basically the same as it was when we started. And that's just was caused probably causing you some more discomfort. Then. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think okay. I think part of the issue was I, I did a bunch of travel during week five or mm-hmm. treat treatment five. I was on a plane for for eight hours each way to Austin. Uh, Tori and I went down to Virginia for a family emergency. Um, when I was down in Austin on a business trip, everyone's going to slap me for this. We had a, um, a, um, basically a, a retreat where we went out and there was go-karting and, <laughs> and, and I felt fucking great. I gotta be honest. Part of, I, I felt great. I'm like, you know what? No big deal. I'll just protect the port. That way the port port doesn't get damaged. I'll put a extra padding. Yeah. Uh, what I didn't realize it was 45 mile an hour goat carts Ooh. and, and I did good on the first, first um, qualifying round, but on the second actual race I ended up crashing in the wall once, which really jarred me. And I think that that caused some of the symptoms I saw during session okay. five. And I think it may have, may have had a slight impact on, on this a little bit too, but, um, but you know what? I mean, sometimes I don't know. How would you say in retrospect, was it worth it? Oh, it, it was worth it. I think some of the recurring symptoms that came after it 
sucks made it not quite so worth it you, you still uh, deserve to live a life though too yeah exactly and, and maybe and, you don't want to go 45 mile an hour go-karting we'll, yeah. we'll find some happy mediums there though <laughs> i mean i mean on 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 the good note for the for the qualifying race i came in first out of 27 nice there you go all right so so there is that and, you know what you've got to stop this like i got nothing to lose <laughs> you, I gotta, i'm going i gotta tell you man i when i was in germany we did go-karts and over there Germ the germans man they take their go-karts serious well, they, uh, oh they, gee imagine that no I, no they do like circuits they they are they're very very serious and the, the track that we we went on over there was it looked like an indie track and those go-karts were trucking and i'll tell you it beats the shit out of you i mean it's oh, yeah. it's rough yeah, I, I was not expecting it. And, 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 and that's, that's part of the thing, right? Is, is I felt great. I felt normal. I felt like I had felt two years before. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what? Risk is minimal. I'll try it. But you get in there and, and that thing's going, it's shaking you all over the place. You got people oh, yeah. bumping into you, you're railing to the wall. And it's like, you know what? Probably the stupidest thing I've done in a while. But all right. you're being relegated <laughs> to bumper cars. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In the bathtub. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, that's what you and Tori do in the bathtub is between. You guys, right? All right. So, so how's this? How has this uh, been an effect on, on say, your, on your daily life, your creative side, your work side, that kind of thing? How's how has this been impacting you? Have, have you been able to to get through it, or is it is it really slowing you down? Yeah. So, so lots of different impacts on this. Um, the day job, not so much because I'm a I'm a remote worker anyway, so I can still do my job normally, and I've got a great team that's supporting me. 200% much, much better than I ever anticipated. So day job side of the house, it's, it's, it's all good. Uh, just normal living, just trying to do anything large impact on the schedule. Cause I live an hour, hour and 15 minutes away from the medical facility we're using. Mm. So, so on like chemo days, you drive over an hour and 15 minutes then drive back an hour and 15 minutes. Um, which is great that Tori's with me, helping me out and taking care of me because she can drive some of that, which, which alleviates some of the stresses, but just, but just schedule purpose period is, is a challenge because right. on, on chemo weeks on Monday, you go over, you spend six hours at the oncologist doing all the stuff that they have to do there, getting pumped full of uh, anti-nausea stuff and steroids and all this other crap. And then finally getting the, the pump hooked up. Then you then you drive the hour and fifteen minutes back, and invariably up here it snowed every fucking Monday that we've had chemo. Oh, <laughs> I know, I, you poor bastards! I swear <laughs> to God, I hate I I hate life for you guys right now Sorry. because of that. So so that turns the hour and fifteen to an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah, if, each way. Yeah. Uh, so then then you're dealing with carrying this pump around for mm -hmm. the next day, and then on Wednesday you drive all the way back over to get it disconnected and then get the, get the um, uh, platelet and white cell medicine, which is a, a bastard pumped into you and then drive back home again. So, all right, you're going to be starting the, re um, the, 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 the radiation soon then, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what are you going to, what are the differences and what are the sim in symptoms and troubles going to be when that starts? Yeah, so the radiation is very different. Um, for that, you're you're there for about a half hour, five days a week. So that means driving over Monday through Friday, mm. getting there for a half hour. They hook up the machine. They they shoot in the different angles of the of the radiation, and that all coalesces at the location they're trying to fry. Um, and basically, the radiation just fries the ever living shit out of the tumor it's so hyper focused the technology they have these days right oh yeah oh yeah. yeah but unfortunately too it also fries the crap around it yeah so so i'm expecting nausea i'm expecting probably more discomfort with normal biological functions right, right. Um, i will be on chemo at the same time for that mm. but it's a different chemo it's a pill-based chemo mm. uh, same basic um effect as the regular chemo but with different side effects than before so before i was dealing with hyper cold sensitivity which basically means if i touched anything less than 35 degrees it's like a thousand needles shooting into your skin hmm. uh, very painful uh, with this 
different chemo from what they've said uh, mainly it's you get very sensitive skin on your hands and feet your hands and feet dry out much more so you got to moisturize moisturize wow. me moisturize me a lot <laughs> it puts um, the lotion on it puts the lotion on <laughs> um, chance of the fingertips the 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 um, skin cracking and peeling a lot um, but yeah i mean the 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 side effects will be a little more intense but from what they said you can still function normally still work still do the normal things um, that you were able to do before so it- Tim says so. So we're we're friends with Tim Cask. He um he's he's finishing up with all his uh, treatments and stuff. I think he's all done, but he had um he like lost feeling in the bottoms of his feet, yep. and he now as a matter of fact the reason he drives a cart around now he, uh, he's older he's uh, he's in his uh, you know 70s. what Tim uh, I don't know 70s. late sixties early seventies I'm not I'm not sure I'm I'm terrible with ages. But uh, I don't want to insult Tim by saying he's older than he is, so I don't really know. But I know he's an older gentleman. Um, he's 35 years old. Sure, right. Okay, fair enough. I'll go with that. But uh, So he, <laughs> he drives a cart around at these conventions. Now, he can walk, but the problem is is when he's on his feet for a long period of time, um, it, it affects him. And he's like – it's basically like walking around with your, your – feet asleep like you can't yeah. you can't feel the bottom of your feet and if you can't feel the bottom of your feet you can't walk you know and he could fall right. and hurt himself so he based that's why he rides around on a cart all the time but he had all that he said he had the super cold the the um the t- he said his taste buds were all screwed up yeah mine mine are a little off they're not they're not super off ba- basically each person uh experiences the side effects to a much different yeah. level right. and for a much different period of time one of the side effects of the drug that causes the cold sensitivity is it also causes, uh, and, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, uh, neuroscopy, which is basically your, your nerves become more deadened than yeah. they were before. Yeah. Uh, normally it's temporary. So, so, so normally your fingertips will fall asleep, your feet will fall asleep yeah. and it lasts for 10 or 15 minutes and it goes away. But as the chemo treatments continue, it's an accumulative effect. Yeah. So there is a chance by the end of your treatment cycle, that you're left with permanent damage to your nerves, which which was a concern because I'm an artist, right? So, yeah, yeah. So, so there was a chance that it would cause long-term effect on my hands to the point where they're tingly, they're, they don't function like they normally would, which means basically that I would just have to find a different way to do the same stuff I do right now, which, oh. which, which, which that's also part of the reason why I'm like, you know, it's, it's actually positive news that they found out that chemo yeah, wasn't yeah. doing much now because now I can avoid some of the long-term toxic effects of the chemo oh, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Right. So what, so let me, let me ask you, what are they giving you any kind of get a good prognosis? Are we, we, we looking at, uh, we're going to kick yeah. the shit out of this thing, man. Yeah. The, the, the prognosis is very good. So, so big picture, the, the cancer has not spread, which is, which is the first indication they, they had That's some, good. They had some potential concerns on my lungs and my liver, but it turns out it's just normal life shit that yeah, yeah. gets into them. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> I mean, right. it's just, just breathing just the little, air. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just the crap that gets in your body and forms little cysts that really just sit there and do nothing. Right. Um, so during the testing, there was a concern that, Oh, we, we've got these spots that are questionable, but by the final test, they're like, Oh yeah, it's nothing. It's just, it's just normal shit. Oh, that's so, normal. These spots so, on your lung. Everybody's got them. <laughs> yeah, so prognosis is good. I mean, okay. this is based on what they've said. It's non-terminal, so so okay. I should not I should not die from this, but it is a long road to get through all the treatment steps and and try to find what actually works to shrink this motherfucker. Because because I mean, that's because that's really the goal, right? The goal is to shrink the hell out of this motherfucker, to kill it off ideally, but right. but at least to shrink it so that we get good margin so that we just take out a piece of colon because that's right. what I would love the end prognosis to be is, yeah, you know what? I'm missing six inches of my colon. Big friggin' deal. Right. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, man, you're a bad motherfucker. You can handle it. It ain't going to kill yeah. you. You'll be all right. You got it. It'll, right. it'll make me stronger. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at Elvis's colon. They, they could have taken two thirds of his. He had plenty. Right. So, 
thing was like 40 pounds, wasn't it? Yeah. That's, it was that's, that's very large cold. Cold. Peanut butter and bananas. The, yes, the <laughs> chitty dream. <laughs> the chitty dream. Don't rub my neck. Anyway, so the reason why I said, okay, this is the, this is the last little bit of this. The reason why I said we uh, is because we've all, you know, we're all behind you. We've all we've all come together. A, a lot of people have come together. And you have gotten, dude, you have gotten so much awesome, awesome support. Uh, people oh, are sending you things. It's fantastic. Yeah. Tell us about that. I love watching your unboxings. Well, well. Speaking of which, I got three new boxes sitting over here on the freezer that I can't get to until Wednesday. Wow. Okay. So, so, so yeah. Um, we the 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 support has been honestly humbling. I mean, I mean, I know I know I've got a lot of online friends. I've, I've, I know I've had them. I know I've got friends like mm-hmm. you guys met at conventions and whatnot. But until you get into a situation like this, you don't really realize how much you mean to them and how much they mean to you because the support has just been been beyond anything I could have ever hoped for. Yeah, um, just yeah. just from just from just the the support on Facebook, the support on Twitter and, and social media, it's it's people are coming out of the woodwork just to say, hey, you know what, we're, we're behind you, we're going to support you, and and obviously the unboxing videos were. Uh, were a strange outcropping of that. As soon as we announced the cancer journey, people are private messaging me, private messaging Tori, and say, "Hey, what, 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 what can we do? We want to send a care package." And right, right. and of course, Tori is good at keeping the details of those to herself, so they're always a constant surprise. Uh, so that that's that's probably one of the coolest things is is out of the blue getting this package that say to Scott from either Amazon or from whoever, and you're mm-hmm. like. I wasn't expecting this. What what is this? <laughs> and then and then going into it and seeing what crazy cool things that they've decided would cheer me up and and keep me strong and keep me going on this has just been phenomenal. Yeah, and, man. I gotta I gotta tell you, you know, it's it's uh, you know, I'm not I'm not into any kind of uh, spiritual anything. I'm I'm a hardcore atheist, but I do know I do know that that stress levels and uh, your you know your the mood that you're in and, and the amount of, of, of uh, hormones and stuff that get released due to, to horrible stress can can literally kill you on their own. And if you're fighting some kind of major battle and you've got all that on top of it, uh, you know, that can kind of that can kind of do you in. So it's good that you keep your spirits up. It's good that people are helping you keep your spirits up because uh, they're helping you fight the hard fight. You know, the, the mental fuck, I got to keep my head in this game. I got to win this motherfucker. I can't I can't, you know, let myself down and let it win. So that's right. good. Yeah, and that's and that's pretty much my mentality anyway. With anything is, is we always have the negative aspects of any situation we're in, but the negative aspects are what's going to kick your ass. You need to stop focusing on the negative aspects, and just focus on the positive and, and focus on the silver lining. Like, I mean, a, a good example is what what happened today. I could totally look at what happened today as as complete defeat. That mm-hmm. yeah, chemo's not doing shit. So woe is me. It, it sucks. But I'm like, you know what? No, that that's crap. Mm-hmm. because the positives of this is I'm not going to deal with the long-term negative side effects of chemo. Right. We can right. start shrinking the shit out of this motherfucker now instead yeah. of waiting another two months when chemo didn't do anything for two more months. Right. right. And, and it's, you, you have to be positive because just like you said, it, it feeds into your karma, it feeds into your whole psyche and that drives and becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. So if you're, if your self-fulfillment <laughs> is focused on the negative, it's going to fucking suck. I'm laughing sorry. at something Tori said in the chat room. Go ahead, Pete. I'm say it. I'm sorry. Tori. Tori. Oh, my God, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at Tori. I know she is. I know she like, is. I'm like 12, man. She said, ass specs. <laughs> <laughs> That's her. I think let's, awesome. let's go back to middle school. <laughs> so, right, right. So Tori had almost made me laugh out loud when she said something earlier in the show. But I, I let it go. But this this guy. That guy, he he can't. No, He's twelve. I saw one <laughs> earlier, the bathtub and stuff, and I wasn't. I, oh, the, I, no, I did in, the bathtub. Yeah, I put a picture of the bathtub when I made the bathtub <laughs> comment. I, I was keeping it. I was keeping it professional. <laughs> professional. All right, all right. Hey, everybody. I think it's it's like we, we we put we put this on the on to the side, right? Yes. I mean, we we talked about it. I I love the fact that we were able to talk about this and put this information out there. Pondy, you are not alone at, by any means. Yeah. We all love you, and we we just love being on this journey with you as well. And we're here till whatever happens. We're here till the end of cancer or the end of you. What doesn't matter. We love we love you other way, man. No, I appreciate that, guys. I I, I appreciate my team, Pondy group. I mean, you guys. You guys rock. I mean, you guys are what's, you guys are part of what keeps me going 
along with my daughter and Tori. I mean, yep. all of you guys combined are, are what helps me through this. Well, good. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, we're, we're happy to be here for you. And if, if, uh, you know, so Scott's got to keep, I mean, he's got to keep making money. So, uh, make sure you guys all check out Scott pond S C O T T P O N D.com. Uh, you can also check out his Facebook page, uh, you know, it's facebook.com forward slash Scott E pond designs. Uh, the links will be in the show notes as well, but, uh, make sure you check out those two places and I'll get the links again at the end of the show. Cause we're about to play a game. Scott, you up yeah. for a game? I am always up for a game. And I'm going to ask Tori to put the, a, a link to the T-shirt sales um, so that I can pin it to the top of the video. Yeah, so, I, think, I think we've got six more days on, on yeah. the re-release of the fundraiser right. since there was such a huge outcry of folks who missed it the first time around. So I will put – so Tori, put that up there, and I will pin it to the top of the video. All right. Cool, cool. Okay. Cool. So let me do this thing here. Let me get this – He's gotta, he has to say this thing, and he always has to say, "Got to do this." Well, this is and a lot of stuff do I got to do, this. man. Do I need um, to wear something special for this? Uh, no, you do not. You do not need to oh, wear anything special. Nope. You just need to know uh, how are you at uh, your Star Wars knowledge, just in yeah. general. You good? You Star Wars fan? I, I'm a Star Wars fan. Watch watch Star Wars many times. Okay. Uh, if if I miss a question, I blame Chemo Brain. Okay. And, and <laughs> you like you like cheese, right? Yeah. Oh, I love cheese. All right. What do you like better, cheese or Star Wars? Ooh, that's a tough one. Wow. No. Got to say Star Wars. All right. Really? All right. Yeah, I got to go with cheese, right. Mike. If you have a passion for both, then you have an even better chance of, of uh, com- competing in this particular game. Nice. You know why? Because... It's game time with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Peter Bryant, and on this episode, we're playing Tasty Cheesies or Star Wars Species, the game where you must determine if I'm saying the name of a Star Wars species or the name of a Tasty Cheesy. I will take turns giving each of you the name of a species (laughs) or a cheese. You must determine which one it is. I I will not spell it. And my pronunciations are rarely correct. However, I will use in a sentence for you if you should need more. <laughs> you which, 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 my guess is, won't help at all. No, not a bit. No, but it'll be entertaining. <laughs> it's, so it's, yeah, it's well worth very it. Very entertaining, yes. Uh, if you get the answer correct, you get one point. Each of you will get six chances to earn a point. As always, ties go to the guests. So Mike must beat Scott by one point to win the game. No pressure, Mike. Good luck. And I'm now not pulling any punches just because you have cancer, Scott. Right. <laughs> right that's, that's okay. right. <laughs> My ass will kick your ass. It's going to punch you right in the sweet spot. Uh, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> and now it's time for Star Wars Species or Tasty Cheesies. Let's do this. All right. All right. All right. Uh, you know what I have to do first, though? I have to open up the file. <laughs> wow. I led. I did all this lead time and... And I gave you all this Sorry, time. no, I'm good. It's open. It's open. It's open. Oh, I had it right here. I just had to open. It. Okay. So uh I'm gonna make Mike go first, just so you can see how this is done, Scott. Okay. All right. Not that I mean it's 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 an easy game, but I always make Mike go first. All right, Mike. Yes, sir. Dang dang key. Dang key. Dang key. Dang key. Or dang key. Do, uh, do we we don't get the spelling do we no you don't get the spelling yeah i know it see i would never give the spelling when i did the game either yeah fuck all right i can do um, a sentence i can do a sentence hey 420 is coming up and uh this species is very danky or or is it hey i had a nice i had a cracker with a piece of cheese on it and that cheese was danky <laughs> i'm going with a species Species. Yes. Mike? I'm sorry. Danky is a traditional Indonesian food made from buffalo milk. Hmm. And, <laughs> and now you know. And now you know it's <laughs> half the battle. Yes. All right, Scott. You're, and I, you know what I did? I made this list. I picked the cheeses and I picked the species. And then I just sorted it in alphabetical order. So it's it's as random as alphabetical order gave it, just so you know. Okay. That's, that's, <laughs> how, ra- that's how I ran That's how I of the bald and goateed men. <laughs> it is. The hey, sexy, look, wait a minute. The look. Sexy bald and goateed men. Wait, wait, look. Yeah. I shaved it off. 
It's growing back well, though. It's that's because back. Scott and I are battling. You're, you're. Oh, they're back. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, right, right. Okay, sorry, my bad. Uh, okay, so Scott, your word is Elom. 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 Can I have that in a sentence, please? Sure, 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 you can. Um, I have this buddy of mine sitting at the bar. He's an Elom, and he'd really like a piece of that Elom and beef sandwich you're eating. Oh. I'm gonna have to go with species on this one. Species. All right, Scott. Elomes were short, stocky, bipedal sentients native to the frigid planet of Elom. <laughs> they, they're named That's after creative. the planet. Yeah, creative. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Star Wars people, they are just so crafty. All right, Mike. Yes. Go tall. Now, goat tall? Goat tall. Now, is this, yes, I melted a nice piece of goat tall on top <laughs> of this pasta, or is it, uh, um, he had a, uh, he had a problem with a goat tall down the street. You know what? I, I really would prefer not to have your sentences, actually. No offense. Why? What's wrong with sentences? I know nothing. Nothing. I, I, you're, you're, you're breaking my concentration here. I need, I need to do my own think through here. <laughs> goat tall. See? Gotal has a has the word goat in it, which is synonymous with nasty cheese. And we all know how I hate nasty goat cheese. So goat tall, a tall goat, but a goat tall. Yeah, you know, no, I'm I'm going with I'm going with cheese. Goat tall cheese. Goat yep. cheese. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's a good thing there, Mike, because um, goat tall is worse. species. The, why does it make my sphincter curl when he hits the buzzer? <laughs> You better get that checked out. <laughs> Harry humanoid sentient natives of the moon Antar Four. Hmm? All right. Oh, the Antarforians. I used yeah. to, I call them Antarforians, but yeah. Antar Four. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know. All right. So Scott, yours is <laughs> yours is Gran. 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 So unlike Mike, I love your sentences. Okay. All right. So. Um, <laughs> The uh, uh, Han Solo got in a gunfight with a Gran, but uh, he accidentally sh didn't shoot. Ah, oh, fuck this sentence all up. <laughs> Han Solo got a fight with a Gran and he lost. Sorry. He hit a wheel of Gran behind. Uh, uh, right, Gran. But he, right. <laughs> yeah. And the shot hit a wheel of Gran, melting it and stinking the place up like dog feet. Because we all know Gran stinks. Grand is awful. Bleeding grand or. Geez. Not grand, not grand. Gran. Gran. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, like short for granny. So, so I'm gonna talk this out. So my gran stank like stinky cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter what she did. So I got to go with cheese on this one. Cheese. All right. All right. Well. Sorry. Oh, the gran were yeah. the uh, a uh, sentient mammalian humanoids native to the planet Kenyan. Kenyan. There. Now you might recognize these. Now these see, are... I used to call them Kenyans. I don't, I don't get it. Are you sure? Grand, they, they're the ones with the Hot three. Eye. They have the three eyes, so they have the two on the side and the one on the top. Have you ever played any of the Star? They played the old Star oh, Wars okay. games. They always showed up in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. not that they mm -hmm. they would call them that. All right, Mike. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mike. Um, mm -hmm. Coral. Coral. Would you call me? Coral. Oh. Coral. Is that with? Can you tell me? Is that with a C or a K? I will tell you, it's with a K. Well, then in that case, cheese. No doubt in my mind, except maybe. Except for the doubt that's in your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. except for the doubt <laughs> in my mind. So what are you doing? Is it cheese or is it a species? I, I, my nickel's down. I don't have any nickels, but okay. if I had one, I'd put it down. Mike? Coral. Yes. A soft Russian cheese made of cow's milk. Nice. Very good. You got one. Yeah. Yay. He's on the board. Everybody's on the board. <laughs> all right uh all right we're halfway through almost halfway through all right so scott nguri nguri i know i'm pronouncing this wrong completely wrong i'll tell you this first two letters are n and g nguri ladies and gentlemen of the nguri <laughs> <laughs> the nguri 
I dated this Ungari girl back in high school. She stank <laughs> like Ungari cheese. She stank God. like Ungari cheese. Uh, let's go. Or is it, wait a minute. Or if it was like a GIF, would it be Injury? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Want to get this debate? <laughs> no. <laughs> We've done this so many times. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's. Let's go with species on this one. Oh, Scott, I'm sorry. Ah. Nguri is a uh, a buffalo, uh, ugh, a buffalo's milk cheese of the Fujian province in China. I don't, buffalo milk might be good. I don't know. They're they're kind of like a cow, sort of. Right? Like goat milk. Oh, not mm. goat. Oh, God, goat. <laughs> I have a specific hatred for goat milk. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I don't want to say that I've ever licked a goat's ass, but... Goat cheese does taste like a goat's ass, like you would so. imagine. So they say. No, I could. I've seen. I've seen the videos. <laughs> yes, oh, that's what I'm right, saying. Well, it's okay. out there. I, yeah, there's, right. there's no denying it. I'm just saying that tastes goat's like a ass Pikachu, does not taste like a Pikachu's good. ass. Huh? Tastes like a Pikachu's ass. No, no, Pikachu's yeah. ass. I would, I would eat five Pikachu asses to not have to eat any goat cheese. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll let but, I'll let Nino know. All right, Rodian. Rodian. That's you, Mike. Oh, no. oh me? Wait a minute. No, that's Scott. No, no, no it is me. No, no, Scott, no, it is Mike. It's my turn. Yeah, okay. It's my turn. Screw me up there. All right, yeah. Rodian. Rodian. Huh. Or is it Rodian? Or is right. it. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a Star Wars character. That is correct. Very good. I was that one. That was a gimme. I I know. Like I, I was like, what? Did he seriously like, use really? Ro- Rodian? Well, Rodian? I couldn't. Whatever. I could, well, whatever. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. Um, Sulgunny. 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 Gotta go with species on this one. Sounds like one. But Son it a- is a pickled Georgian cheese. From the Samagreto region. Is that Georgian? Georgian? Like from Georgian, the Georg- Georgian. Yeah, from the country Georgia. You know where? Okay. Uh, yeah. the, the good old southern country of Georgia. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Not many it, people know that it even emancipated. It's a typically little, served with grits. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little north and very east of Florida. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Mike, you're up. Uh, Sulustan. <laughs> Starless said good a job on that one. Oh, nice, nice. Oh God. Oh, please. I need all of the cheese puns, puns we can have. Yeah. Cheese Bring pun them. it up. Bring them. Yeah, just oh pour it yes, on. and I uh somebody got a point. I got a point. Yeah. Sulu Stan. Wow. Wait a minute. Is this who is this you. now? You. Oh me. Yeah. Oh crap. I was like, shoo, shoo. You skipped it man, I wouldn't want to have this one. <laughs> Whoops. I actually would want this one. Oh. Sulu Stan. Sulu Stan. Or Sulastan. Or Celestan. Or Celestian. Or Celestian. (laughs) You know? Well, it's not TN. We can only have too many oars before we reach the word fish from (laughs) from whatever you said. So (laughs) can I get a most accurate pronunciation just one more time? Sulustan. That would be my guess. If I had to put my nickel down, it would be Solostan. Oh, 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 Solostan. Oh, oh, crap. I, Solostan. Solostan. No, Solo. Solo. S U. Solo. Oh, crap. Hey, you know what? I I could flip a <laughs> coin. Hold on. Here, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to have to go with species. Species. Mike? Ding, ding, ding. Celestans were a species of near humans from Sullust. Wow. I didn't know that. Did you know that one, Scott? Did you? I did. I did okay. know that one. All right. All right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Sire, seer. I'm going to spell this one only because I I can't begin to pronounce it properly. It can be pronounced so many different ways because it's only three letters. S Y R. <laughs> right. That, that, not that that really even helps. So good job. No, but I didn't want to pronounce it so unbelievably wrong that you know maybe Bob. 
What's that? It's pronounced Bob. Bob. Okay, yes. Now, uh, is Bob a cheese or is Bob a species? Bob's cheesy. Bob's cheesy, and that is correct. Nice. Nice. Sear is a firm Ukrainian cheese, somewhat similar to cottage cheese. Oh. Yes. Well, hello there. Some of these, some of these pictures I saw, I would, I would eat about half of these, even though I can't pronounce them. Well, hello there, Purdy. <laughs> All right, Mike. Hey. You get my belly. <laughs> you got any cheese? <laughs> just, hey, just wipe the cheese off of it. <laughs> God. All right. All right. Stop, stop, stop. All right. Uh, Mike, Erda. Yes. Erda. Uh, like uh, Erda. <laughs> But Erda. Erda? Or, or, yeah, it's Erda. It's got to be Erda. How many letters is 12. <laughs> yeah, 15. No. <laughs> yeah. E-R-O-U-G-H-L-O-U-G-H-L-O-U-G-H. God, have you guys ever seen how win is spelled in, in, I think it's Viet, to the Viet, I think it's Vietnamese, but it's win, it's like N-G, like W something something something. It's like yeah. oh, that's win. I'm like oh yeah yeah. That's that's what it is. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Um, now I, I got to stay away from the chat room because they're giving so many good puns. Um, all right. What what is it again? <laughs> Erda. <laughs> Erda. 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 Yo, I, I what heard up, Erda? That. <laughs> I heard of that. <laughs> I never heard of that. I've never even aced that. <laughs> Could you? Uh, you know what, will. Pete? I am mm-hmm. actually going to say that I need this in a sentence. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So, Erda, um, this pizza has a nice shaved Erda cheese on the top, mm-hmm. but it was cooked by that hairy Erda over there. You mean that Erdanian? Could be an Erdanian. Sure. Why not? Well, then I'm going to have to obviously go with. A species, because I really wouldn't know otherwise. <laughs> well, you went the wrong way. <laughs> An unaged whey cheese from Macedonia. All right, Scott, here's your chance to tie it up and oh, win the game. Way to go, Mike. Way to go. No pressure. No pressure. We quay. We quay. We quay. We quay. It's got to be we quay. It's gotta, that's got to be how it's pronounced. 50 50 90 right yes <laughs> that's that's a triangle yep 50 50 90 i gotta go with cheese and i think it's asian i think it's asian cheese Scott, ah, i'm sorry yeah. we quays were a race of humanoids that came from the outer rim planets of something like that what was that yeah say it again Srilur, S R I L U U R. That's where they're from. These these guys were the guys. Okay, so do you remember the uh, uh, Return of the Jedi? They're standing on that that floating thing over the Sarlacc. The guys with like the the ponytail and the, like the like the leathery oh, face. Okay. They are weak way. Oh, yes, yes. So, you know what that means, Mike? Mike is our winner. Woo-hoo! This is what it means. Right here. Such a beautiful Uranus. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't feel bad about losing or feel good about winning this game. It's basically a fucking coin toss. <laughs> it's every question. It's a coin toss. And it's done that way on purpose. It's just fun to say these weird that's names awesome. and have people guess. So uh and that and that's all Mike wins. That's all he gets. Anyway, that's all I so. get is the song. Yeah, that's it. That's not even an original. But uh <laughs> all right. It's getting late. Scott, thank you so much for coming on and joining us. It's awesome Thanks, to brothers. hear about how you're doing. See, you look, you look well. You look, hey, you look great. Yeah, I feel pretty good tonight. Yeah, you look like a million bucks, man. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy you're doing well. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with the radiation. Hopefully, it, it knocks the crap out of it. Um, and I look forward to a lot more of your cover, cover, cover your books and, and artwork and stuff. Um, I, I've enjoyed them all. They're really cool. I, I did have one question to get back to. So when, yeah. when Scott does a book through like his publisher or, or Cooley does his through his publisher, you don't get a crack at those at all. Do you? 
No, because the, the the publisher has has say right. on those. Right, so, right. So they can make a case that they want to use me, but typically they've already got someone cheap in mind or whatever. Right. That's right. that's effective or whatever, whatever criteria they use. So, but I'm okay with with doing their self published stuff. I mean, that stuff I think is top notch and frankly oh, yeah. better than a lot of published stuff anyway. So. Oh hell yeah! Oh hell yeah! Yeah, hell I mean, yeah. dude, the. the the GFL has been awesome. It's been fantastic. I'm looking forward to the next book. Um, although, I mean, like Scott, all, all Scott shit's good. Except for, I, I, oh God, I have to say the, the, I'm not the fan. I'm not a big fan of his late, that, that last three that he did with the, um, the, uh, a live series, the live series. Yeah. I wasn't, I, I couldn't get into it. I don't know if it's just because he went – I mean, it was very different from the other stuff that he did. Yeah. So, I mean, to be fair, it was a different style completely. And I'm not a big – for me to like a YA book at all is a is is a big, big yeah. stretch. I yeah. mean, there are a few that I kind of like, but, I mean, for the most part, it's not my thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I liked it overall, but, but like you said, it was completely different. And, and it really wasn't us as far as the audience goes. Right. So, so you kind of had to set set aside any preconceived notions, and then just any any genre uh, leanings on yourself to even be able to get into it. Sometimes, and you know, and that's fine. I mean, you know, he has had great success with it, and I'm I'm actually very happy, you know, that he's that he's had been has a lot of success for it because I mean that just gets him to put out more books for us that that yep. you know because I know he still likes writing his normal style. So yep, we'll, exactly. we'll see because I think what is it? Uh, Mount Fitzroy's coming, right? Isn't it? It's, I mean, because it's coming. It's coming soon. Yeah, he's, right. Because he finished Earth Core. Yep. And he promised yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's 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 either a long ways into Fitzroy already, or or close to first draft. Okay. Okay. From the from the last last, so I may I may be wrong on that. Big John can can correct us in the comments if he's watching. Um, but yeah, he's 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 well away, well on the way on that one. And the, and, and, the, and we already the, have a cover for it. Oh, we do. Oh, okay. All right, I haven't seen that. Yeah, if you has, go to scottpond.com, it's one of the most more recent postings. Oh, very awesome, awesome. What Mount Fitzroy? Oh, because he is he producing that himself? He is producing that himself. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Sweet. And I'm gonna have to buy that one, right? Because he's not podcasting the, the second series books anymore, right? Which nope. is fine. Because I've 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 bought a few of it. I mean, in fact, I've bought I've bought all his hardbacks. Um, yeah. and, and, but there was one audio book. I'm trying to remember which one it was. I, th it might've been earth core where I didn't feel like waiting. I wanted to, I, I wanted to like just demolish it. So I just bought the, I had a credit and I bought the audio book. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, that, and, and that was, that was one of the first, the A narrated, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Did, 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 did an A narrate that one? I don't or, think so. Or was, or was that the third book in the Alive series? Oh, uh, it might've been the third book in the Alive series. I could see her yes. narrating that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's wild. All right. You got any part, any thoughts, Mike? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I was going to try and pull up the thing, but I'm, I'm like, there are too many screens. I have way too many screens right now. <laughs> my, I think my ADD medicine just wore off. All right. All right. We're, nice. We went really late. Scott, we like talking to you so much. We, we actually ran the show late, but that's cool. It's all good. Um, let's do... Uh, this? Uh, let's do the thing. All right, everybody. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask us, ask us, uh, or our guest questions, or just banter with the other Mythwits. I've only done this like a million freaking times. If you miss our live it's show, smooth. it's smooth. <laughs> you can always catch the encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us at Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher, or you can listen at Mythwits.podbean.com. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread the Mythwits love over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. Uh, we are a common, Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't make a cheese out of it. Make sure to check out Stu187.com for more cool stuff. And please join our mailing list. It's a button right on the front page. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike... Scott, we enjoyed having you on, and it was very mozzarella. Ooh. Oh, nice. Very Fredella. Nice.